Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today, I'm gonna be installing the Customs Dynamic rear light that goes on the roof rack. And um, just update so far, I've um, put on the Chromeworks headers and I have on the tab uh, BAM mufflers and um, this thing is ready. I just need to find me a tuner that has a configuration map for this bike and I might be able to ride it again one day. But until then, let's go ahead and see what Custom Dynamics has for me in this box. It's got the box for the lights. Oh, wow. Nice little uh, book. Pretty cool. I definitely got to go through there. And I don't know if you guys seen a new release on the new Harley Davidson CBOs for 2023 but they look pretty cool. I saw the new um, headlight design for the new 2023 CVO Road Glide, which is um, pretty sweet. And um, I don't know, one of these might have to go, um, but not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one. <laughs> I got a little space right here, <laughs> so all right. Let's get back to this light. So I am gonna have to take the roof rack off and for this install. And um, I'm pretty sure they have some detailed instructions here. Always comes with them. But um, this is gonna be pretty much plug and play. I do have to run a wire through the bar. And just dump this stuff out. And um, let's get going. I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this stuff out. Okay, so now that I have everything unpackaged, I like to take an inventory of everything that I'm supposed to have included within my kit. And so you'll have a diagram right here that tells you and lists out all the um, proper items that you're supposed to have in your packaging. And um, judging from the photo and from the directions that I read, these are all the parts that are needed. This is the brake, the brake light itself. And as you can see, it already comes pinned. And um, those are gonna plug into here after you run the wires. I got the, the two bolts and washers that are gonna mount that to the rear of the rack. And um, there's the wire harness, um, plug and play, and um, the wire that's gonna come out of the tour pack into, or from under the seat into the, the um, it's not really a tour pack, but it's the uh, trunk of the trike and um, plug in into here. So that's gonna be pretty straightforward. This piece of wire here is gonna go through the one of the holes in the rack, and that way I'll be able, I'll be able to run the wires through the um, through the rack itself, the luggage rack itself. So that's gonna be pretty easy. Um, I'm gonna pause right now so I can go ahead and remove my luggage rack off. Pause in a second. But what I'm gonna be doing though is uh, I'm gonna be running the wire straight through this hole through here. And um, once I get that wire ran through, I'll go ahead and um, there's like a rubber, it's a rubber tab under here, under where my finger is right there, that I'll have to pull out and that will allow me to um, mount the light here through that rubber tab in there down through the tubing and out through the hole right there. I don't know if I could do this while it's on, so it's gonna be easier for me to go ahead and take it off, but I just wanted to show you the part. That's the uh, rubber tab that, um, that I'm speaking of. And these are the hole mounts that I'm gonna be hooking the brake light up to. And um, so I already have my insulation taken out of the trunk area. It says to um, drill a hole through this plate right here. I can see that this plate is kind of loosely on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. And wow, it's just, it's finger loose. So that's, um, that's different. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, figure out like what size hole I wanna drill into this so that I can have my wires go through. All right, so I'll be right back. Just wanted to give you a visual. I just um, ended up pulling this little tab out and that's a lot of uh, a lot of space in there. Um, so I'm gonna try and go ahead and 
I'm actually trying to just remove this bolt instead of removing my entire rack. Just remove that bolt and see what I could work with and see if I could do it without removing my entire rack. It, it certainly would be easier to work with with everything off, but I mean, with this much space right here to, to bolt it on, I'm just gonna go ahead and try it. I know I'm jumping around here, but I know someone's gonna ask. So this part was $82.25 after tax and uh, no discount codes. And also I ordered it on uh, the 20th of April and it got here and it's now the 26th. So it took like six days. I think I ordered it late at night and um, that's it. It comes with this uh, thank you note. Tells you who pulled it, who packaged it, and who inspected it. It comes with a everything to light up your road glide book and a catalog and um, some stickers and stuff like that. All right, back to normal. So I'm using a half inch socket to go ahead and remove this one bolt. This is a bolt that has a hole in it. Well, it's not a hole, but it's hollow. And um, that's the one that allows you to go ahead and run your wiring. I know that's loud, so I'll go ahead and get this off and then come back. Okay, got this off. I have my uh, plastic washer next to here, my metal washer on there, and um, that's the ugly hole that I drilled, but um, it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this piece here and try and run it through and if it goes through then all I have to do is take the ends of that to pull it. All right so what I did I put it through this direction versus there because when I put it in that direction it just went straight down the tubing. So through here with the non-loop end I was able to push it and I could already see it wiggling around right there and um, it's uh, it's gonna be coming out. I could take some needle nose and grab it from this point, or I can keep trying to push and spend longer time. So I'm just gonna grab a pair of needle nose and grab the little fishing line right there so I could take, so I could save time. Okay, so now that I have fishing line or the supplied loop that goes from out one end and out the other, I can go ahead and mount my light on and tape my wires in, pull them through. Now, I am going out of order from what the direction says. It says I'm supposed to remove the seed and pull the fuse and all those things first, but um, you can go out of order just as long as um, you, you don't uh, go ahead and attach certain things that are not gonna allow you to move to the next step. Um, so just do whatever's easiest for you. The directions can kind of like check off what you need, but um, anyhow, let me go ahead and get my light because I am mounting the light on first. And um, to do that, I'm gonna need the washers and the mounting screws. And I'll also need these parts to secure the wires and stuff in place. But I'll do that part after I get it all in. So your light comes with um, protective type of wrapping. I did pull that out so I could kind of see what I have there. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and now go ahead and put this on and mount it and screw it in. So just a tip, these notches on the top side, those are the notches that are gonna go against there. So that's gonna be a good indicator of where it's gonna go. And it fits right there in place. So there you go. And uh, once you have it fit in place, you can go ahead and see how this lines up, line it up, and go ahead and run your washer and your bolt through there. And in case you're wondering, yes, I did use a dab of blue Loctite on those, and now I'm gonna go ahead and attach the light to the rack. And using the tool of your choice, go ahead and secure the light fixture to the roof rack not so tight that you're gonna crack the plastic in there. Once I feel it getting tight, I just back off and um, I'm only doing like not even half turns so that I can feel when this is getting tight. And I'm using this little small tool hill here with a bent angle so that uh, I can feel it feel a lot easier how tight it's gonna be. 
So I don't know a torque spec, but once I can't push it anymore with one finger, that's when I'm stopping. You know, no strength, but I'm just stopping right there. So now I'm gonna take my wiring and I'm gonna go ahead and tape it to the end of the line right here so that I could just pull it through. Okay, so the way I'm doing it is I'm using black electrical tape and there are three wires. And so I tape the three wires together first using a hollower end right there. Um, this doesn't, it's not gonna require like great strength cause it's not going, but maybe a few inches or so. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna use another thin piece of tape and tape it around the end of the fishing line. I don't want it to be too thick because then it's gonna have trouble pushing through. So once you've taped your wires together with the, the, uh, line, the supplied line, as skinny as you can make it, then you go ahead and pull it through, but you wanna use two hands. So by pulling here and pushing on the other hand end so that you can guide it and push it through. All right, so I am not using two hands, but I should be because, well, it goes through with no problem. It's not as tight as I thought it would be. And, um, but I still wanna push to give it an assistant, assistance. And um, there you have it. All right, so that's through. The wire is only gonna be from here to here. That is kind of exposed, but um, it's not too bad. When it's closed, you won't even be able to see that little wire from there to there. But what I'll probably do is I have some black Gorilla tape. I may make a thin strip right here and put it right there to cover up. See, this thing might still go back in here. Yeah, I think it might still fit. I'm gonna see if I can get this to fit in there again to uh, so that I don't get any water going through that. All right, so now that that wire is through, I'm gonna use the supply tabs and route it along the, uh, I'll probably route it along this uh, folding um, hinge device. And then, because that will be less stress on the wire itself, and then I'm gonna route it along. I'm gonna drill a one fourth hole in this piece of plastic. And once I get the hole drilled and the wire actually through the hole, then I'll, you know, I'll go ahead and remove the seat. I'll put this through and then I can put, I could actually put the tabs on there because this is gonna go um, through the body and plug into everything. So I'll go ahead and run this and I will go ahead and drill the hole and I'll be back. All right, so I was able to make that one uh, fourth inch hole and now this plate is ready to go back on and uh, I'll put this drill back so I don't need it anymore. Okay, so I'm back over here with the bike. Next thing I need to do is go ahead and get that bolt back, the hollow one. Uh, I think I got it down here. Yeah, here it is. Hollow bolt, and I need to run the wires through it so that I can secure the rack back in place. So I'll run the wires through here, and then I'm gonna run the wires through the, the plate, and then I'll put this back. I have my screwdriver, flathead, so I can go ahead and remove the seat off. So I'm gonna do those things and I'll be right back. So what you'll need to do in order to get the wires through the bolts, you're gonna to have to take the tape and the, all that stuff off and just run each one through individually. And um, that's it, I'll be right back. Okay, those are through. And I will run it all the way back up to where it needs to go. Don't forget the washers so that it can pull all the way through and in place to where you can tighten it. And now the other part that you're gonna pull through is, all right, who remembers whether this was this way or this way? I don't remember, so it's going uh, this way. <laughs> so that this will be flush against the wall and the other part will stick out towards me. So just, I could always rewind it, right? But, oh well. It's not critical. So I'm just gonna run the, the wiring through. It's bad filming. Bad recording, not filming. Remember we used to film? 
All right, so that's through. And I can go ahead now and put the um, pinning device in because it'll fit through there easily. So I can put the, the, the pin on if I want or just remove the seat and just keep it moving. I'll place that down and I'm gonna secure this on while we're already on this step. But what I could do is I can go ahead and run the wire and make sure the light works. That way I'm not doing all this for nothing, but I'm gonna go ahead and risk it. So I use this half inch in order to go ahead and tighten that back up on there. And that's on. And like I said, I just need to run the wires around, figure out the best way around and um, button it back up. All right, so for me, I use uh, Gorilla Tape when I'm running uh, any wires along the body of uh, my motor vehicles. Um, based upon, cause like the tabs that they have or the wire holders that they have, um, they work great. And yeah, they'll hold the, the wire in place, but you smash them down, they're supposed to stick. And sometimes it doesn't really stick good. You have to use alcohol swabs. And I don't like how this, that metal can over time kind of could possibly cut through the wire. It's, it's not probable, but it's possible. But you know, this is this is not as pretty, but again, nobody's in here looking at this part. And then this is all covered up by, um, you know, the insulation that goes in the trunk. So that's gonna be covered. So anyway, that part's done. I just made sure that um, the only wire that's really exposed is back in the corner back there. So that way nothing's gonna get caught or snagged against anything. That's why I, kinda, I like using um, the tape instead. And additionally, I tore a little small piece of the Gorilla Tape off and I was able to run it along here. And I was able to get that rubber tab back in by just you know cutting a piece of it off um, the long way where the wire is so that it would all fit back in place. So now that's pretty much weather tight and that's what the light will look like when it's off. And I'll show you what it's gonna look like when it's on. Next thing I need to do is clear my seat off and um, remove the seat so that we can get to the rest of it. I like using short screwdrivers for this part. I'm, I'm going to get a twist off tab, similar to how I have on the other road glide. And eventually, well, not even eventually, but I need to order this locking seat. So like if you have this on, somebody could easily twist that off. But this part right here, and one of my, what is this, the lowrider? In one of my lowrider videos, I have what company makes this, but at least with that, you need a tool in order to take the seat off. So I will be getting one of those. I have to figure out what color I wanna put on this one. It wasn't really gonna go with the black and gold theme. I'm not sure what color I'll go with, what theme. But, uh, all right, so remove the seat. It's pretty easy. That's how fast it is for somebody to snatch your seat off. And, um, my wires are all back here through the firewall. I can see where they are. I'll go ahead and grab them through. Let me go ahead and pause the video for a sec. All right, so what I did, I just lifted my shock adjuster up and I was able to pull the wires through there. And also underneath of there was where I have my other light housing attachment pieces. I just have them taped together neat and that's the uh, magic strobe. So we're going to connect everything to there. But first, I'm going to remove the cover off and I'm going to unplug the fuse. And it also says to disconnect your negative battery terminal. So on the clutch side of the bike, I went on and removed the panel off and you'll have your red fuse right here, which is your master fuse. You can go ahead and pull and unplug that. And I'm plugging a lot of this stuff will keep you safe and it'll also stop your bike or prevent your bike, I believe, from throwing uh, various error codes. And um, I really don't feel like taking all this stuff off to get to my negative battery terminal. So you guys follow the directions for removing that negative 
and I will not. So we'll see how that goes live on camera. Okay, so I have that tab that is used to where I'm gonna be putting those pins in, but I lined it up so I could see what hole goes where or what wire goes where. So you have red, blue, and black in that order. I have it lined up for the direction it's gonna plug in and that's how I'm gonna plug in my pins. Okay, so I have the pins plugged in and uh, when you plug them in, you'll be able to hear a snap. So I'm gonna plug that red one, push that red one in a little bit further so I can make sure. One thing that I wish I would have did or that I'm still gonna do is where these wires are, are very light, I'm gonna run some uh, insulation by adding tape along there all the way up to the end of it. I wish they would have included like maybe some kind of like um, insulation tubing like that's on here. Okay, so what I did so that I could go ahead and put some tape around those three individual wires, I opened the trunk back up, I pulled the wire back, added the um, electrical tape on there and then just pulled it back forward and then just ran it back all the way up to cover. And I'll probably take some and I'll cover this up too. It's not necessary, but it's what I wanna do. So if you are connecting those lights up to your custom dynamic lights, well, one, you're gonna go ahead and plug the female end up to the lights that you just ran the housing for. And then next, you will, here's your um, magic strobe device and um, you wanna run it from the end that is, so these are your wires going into the magic strobe, connectors going into the magic strobe, and this is a connector going out. So it says to run it downstream of the assembly, where is it at? Yeah, so plugged in downstream. So this is downstream, this is what they're talking about. So I'm just gonna disconnect what I have by pushing that tab and pulling out. And then the wire harness that comes with the brake light, you're just gonna plug it in place where those just came out of. So this end looks like that, so that's not gonna go. So this will plug into one side and then the other part will plug into the other side. I'll be back. So those plug in just like that and you'll hear the audible click. And so now that everything is in place with the magic strobe device, I'll go ahead and test the lights out and see if they work. First things first, um, let me take a step back. When you're um, plugging this in and you're mating it up, you'll see that um, this has black, blue, and red. So you wanna do black to black, red to red, and then this yellow is gonna go to blue. All right, because that's the only one remaining and it says it in the directions right there, okay? Now, um, in order for me to get that put back on or to start up, I'm gonna have to plug the fuse in and then I'll check and make sure everything's correct. And I'll go ahead and make everything neat, tuck it back in, push that down and put the seat back on. So what I did, I just taped all my wires and everything back around everything and put the shock adjuster back down. And now I'm gonna put the seat back on. Prior to putting the seat back on, I'm gonna go ahead and plug the fuse back in goes in there, fuses in, put this piece back on, side panel back on. You can see the side panel fits in the holes right here. And that's on there. Just got my little plug for my battery tender. And the seat just connects, how the seat works, it connects into this part. And then you have that screw, which I need a security bolt for. Just the dynamics of the seat, that is the part that this is going into. So you wanna make sure that that's locked in place. All right, so I'm gonna, now that I have everything put back together, I'll go ahead and turn the bike on and check out the light back here. It works with the other custom dynamic lights. It's really bright. And um, let's see if we could see, if I could press this, I probably have to put it in a, wow, you can see it reflect off of it, how bright it is. Um, cool, so it's all 
All right, so that's gonna do it for this episode on how to install the Customs Dynamic brake light to the Harley Davidson luggage rack for the Road Glide 3, and I believe other Free Glide models. This rack was actually different from the ones that actually go on the tour packs. And so anyway, that'll do it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.